Ladies and gentlemen, and my friends beyond the spider, whether you like it or not, have it! with Hedvig Inch by Angry Inch, the podcast where we analysed and tore down the walls surrounding the masterpiece that is Hedvig and the Angry Inch, chapter by chapter. But those chapters are done. Today, we are talking about a wonderful, exciting event in world history. First, I will introduce my very special guests. You will know them very well from the show, I am sure. I am joined by Carla Victorious and Ginger Snaps. Oi, hi. Hello. Hey, welcome from Middle Earth. Hey. <laughs> well, the reason we have to say Middle Earth is because when I performed at the Glory, which is in Hackney for the mm-hmm. first time, obviously you give basic details and the person just didn't know where I was from. It's like something about Midlands is like uh, Middle Earth. So <laughs> I've used it ever since. <laughs> that is fantastic. And the Glory, that, hang on. That is that where uh, the gold rush that's in the glory, isn't it? The drag show, Ooh. I think so. There, there's all kinds okay. of drag shows there. Yeah, I don't know if you um know the London um cabaret queer legend Johnny Wu, but Johnny Wu yes. owns it, runs it. Uh, yes, yes, I have yeah. heard that. So, so there's basically always something happening, it's pretty cool. Oh, but we didn't go to the glory, sadly, as much as I would like to go there. We went to Manchester and home, which is a very confusingly titled uh, place when you're trying to find it on a map and you, you're typing it into your phone, home, and it shows you your home address. It's like, no. <laughs> um, but it's a great venue. I've been before to see Jinx Monsoon. Um, well, technically, it was Peach's Christ show, but, you know, Jinx is this. Jinx and Dale are the stars of the show. Um, but was this was this your first time at home? Yes. So, um We've barely even been to Manchester, to be honest. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, once or twice. But yeah, we certainly haven't been to home before, but it was a really great venue. I liked it a lot. Yeah, it was a wondrous place and everyone was super happy and just happy to be out. And uh, yeah, it was just a good vibe, I think, as soon as, as soon as we entered the postcode. Hell yes. And you say, yeah, everyone was very happy. It was quite nice. I think it was just nice to be doing something normal for a change uh, and going to see a show. And uh, two of us, <clears throat> not all three of us, went to the meet and greet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Some of us need to be drinking in Weatherspoons. <laughs> uh, it wasn't me. <laughs> so, some of us paid extra to meet Davina De Campo, and uh, some of us didn't. And I, and I tried to keep it a secret. Like I, I was like, I'm not going to say to Davina, I am that person you uh, spoke to before in the past. You have been on my show, but uh, Carla, you you let it slip, which I I actually thank you for. Well, I mean, we couldn't. We I wasn't going to let that go because we were wearing the pod merch as well. We were literally wearing. Mm-hmm the podcast logo on our bodies and she said like like, uh i thought it looked familiar it's like yeah that's the fucking logo yeah and then um and then people off after we'd met her like fans saying oh where did you get that t-shirt and i'm like no that's that's pod merch (laughs) (laughs) yeah in fact i was gonna say you can't buy it you can you only get it if you come on the show but no no please do go and buy it from the uh, sleepy charlie media tea public (laughs) <laughs> that's where i bought it yeah i did indeed very good quality it is too it is isn't it yeah. i buy a lot of things i'm wearing a tea public shirt but not for my own show for star wars minutes i'm wearing that today oh cool so many minutes oh yeah they're, they're the ogs <laughs> well technically they're not technically there was another one but they didn't do it like in the same format like star wars minute created the format as as we know it today okay Right, noble pioneers. <laughs> is there a Rocky Horror one? There is. I thought uh, there was. Yeah, it's... that's familiar. Is it minute by minute or song? There's two. Uh, there's a minute by minute one, and I think a song by song. And I've been on both, so I'm confused. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, crossovers. So, talking of minute by minute, 
if there was only four minutes to save the world and you weren't part of the saviors, what four one minute podcasts would you listen to? Oh my God. Okay. I can't include this one because it's not minute by minute. It's in the minute by minute family. Sure. But it's not minute by minute. So I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to be biased. Bat minute. Right. Okay. Bat minute. <laughs> okay. Go listen to that. But then Obviously. it's Star Wars minute. The, the granddaddies of them all. Uh, Indiana Jones minute. Mm-hmm. And hmm, I've, I can only pick one more. What could I possibly choose for one more? <gasps> Alien minute. Oh, that's a very studious one. That's that's like less light banter uh, and more like that. The one's a film professor and the other one's his student. You know, it's very. Ser- I mean, they have Ooh. a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong, but it's like they analyze everything. It's great. Great. <laughs> you can probably hear the sound of the uh, the alien encyclopedia, right? Being flat. <laughs> <Can you? laughs> I think they're walking encyclopedias, though. <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> I, I wish I was. Uh, um, sadly, Ginger, I have ADHD. I can't remember anything. <laughs> Ginger, you you need to listen to that alien minute, don't you? That is totally your thing. Oh yeah. Oh, I'll probably yeah. have a rash on my chin from rubbing it so hard. Going, <laughs> Oh, Oh, a lovely fact. We did have one of the hosts, uh, well, we've had both of them on, but we had one of them, Mitch Bryan, on Bat Minute. um, Because, well, A, he's the host of Alien Minute, B, he's a film professor, and C, he is the person who was tasked with introducing Bane to the animated Batman. He wrote it. Oh, wow. Bane. We didn't know he wrote it. (laughs) <laughs> he just told uh-huh. us randomly oh yeah yeah you, you know i wrote oh, that right like, what? Yeah, what? Casual. <laughs> yeah. so uh, it was interesting but um i mean because we've slipped into batman i have to mention did you see the rumors about gaga <gasps> yes yeah that that gaga. ties into this in a way because gaga's in in the lgbtq wheelhouse absolutely and I think it's hilarious that the rumor is the new Joker movie is going to be a musical because <laughs> it's it's like which, pissing which off great. all the people who were like excited for a sequel, and all the people who weren't bothered about a sequel like me are now like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I also heard that they're going to film the whole thing upside down. <laughs> I mean, bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Why not? Screw it. Anyway, going back to the uh, to the main event. I'm currently looking at your photo of the three of you hmm. posing the house down. Um, you've all got your devil horns out and you've got your fingers me. displayed in a devil horn as well. So that's really uh, cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you <laughs> you've you've to. got to whip the real deal out, you know. <laughs> um, and I have to say, I mean, obviously, Davina looks divine, but their hair looks like it's grown out of their head. It looks incredible. <sighs> yeah. What yeah. a wig. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I actually, close. I saw, I saw um, even before we went to see it, I was looking at some of the promo pictures and the little video that they put out of, of Davina in the costume and the wig. And I immediately thought of Mike Potter and I was like, oh, he won't like that. It's far too good. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be honest, too, yeah. Mike it's too to... posh. He likes hard fronts. He yeah, Mike was fronts. very, uh, a big fan on the, on the show of kind of like getting a bit of a cheaper wig wasn't he yeah well his argument and i kind of see what he means is that if we're going with the character Mm -hmm. she sort of doesn't have a lot of money so why would she have an incredibly good lace front wig that like looks like it's growing from her head totally agree but at the same um, time, I'm, I was there, like thinking that hair is amazing. <laughs> I know. Oh no, that, that's the other side of it. I loved it. It's a beautiful wig. I loved that whole look, actually. <laughs> Davina said to us, oh. uh, didn't she? Like, um, not just with the look, but with the whole show. The plan was to basically analyze a whole bunch of different uh, interpretations of Hedvig on stage and and pick and mm. choose what they liked the best from each one, like a mishmash, which is yeah, very Hedvig yeah. in itself in that approach. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Patchwork. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All sewn up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was about, about to start singing. No, <laughs> I'll save that. Um, yeah, I think it was a really good approach. And I also really liked, obviously, having not watched a stage show version of it before, but having watched the movie a million, million times and many bootlegs of the Broadway show, etc. 
I did think Davina's interpretation was quite different in a mm. sort of in a good way, in a really refreshing way. Obviously, oh, it's, um, the director obviously has a lot to do with that as well. The director is Jamie Fletcher. Oh yeah. Who I, yeah. Oh, I had a little back and forwards chat with on Instagram a few times, and um, she seems really nice. But yeah, I think that she did a great job with that. Well, who who was it? Davina said there was one person on the crew who had been f like fantasizing about making a Hedvig production for like twenty oh, odd years. It was the set designer, though I don't have the name at hand. It was like their dream was oh. to do a Hedvig set, and obviously they did it in their their own twist, really, which is like perfect for that northern working man's club vibe. I think that was perfect. Yeah. Totally. In fact, that's something Davina did bring a couple of times, despite playing Hedvig, you know, as German. Uh, whenever Hedvig would do, like, impersonate like an American accent, in in this instead, Davina would do like a do like a Manchester accent or something. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. You see, I've got this was a while back now for me. This is over a month, so my brain can't go back that far. So that's that okay. Helpful. I can't remember this morning. It's fine. No, like, yeah, tell me things that happened because I won't remember them, even if they were good. <laughs> yeah, that that was hilarious, actually. I loved all that. I, the dropping just, into the accent. Davina's whole approach to accents was great. I thought she did fantastic at the Hedvig <sighs> voice as well. Very good, yes. And um, I've certainly seen some bootlegs where people were not as successful. <laughs> Give Let us, us names. Names. Oh, names. Oh, <laughs> let's, let's, you know. <laughs> we, we want the details. Never. Never. It's going to be like a communist witch hunt. I have here <laughs> a list of Hedvigs. <laughs> <gasps> you would. In no particular order, just rubbish. You, I can give you a name, though, because I looked it up while we were talking and the... According to my small bit of Googling just then on the quiet, the costume designer and the set designer are one and the same, uh -huh. which is Ben Stones. Okay, I, I, I like that had... approach because, like, the the yeah. set and the costumes are one. Yeah, it may, I suppose it could make it more cohesive. Hmm. But um, actually, as well as the director, Jamie Fletcher, I had a little tiny bit of back and forward with Ben as well just before it started oh. and they were very excited about the whole thing and they were very happy that I was sharing some of their artwork of the designs. Oh you showed me those um, they looked amazing we'll have oh, to post them in the group. Stunning yes yes so beautiful so um, Ben designed all the pieces but then they were obviously constructed and sewn by like a team mm. but they're all uh, Ben's vision You've got to have a team, to be honest, when you're working on something like this. You can't just sit there and do it oh, on your yeah. own, right? No, no, I wouldn't expect them to sew everything themselves. But um, I will say this. I, I did research one thing, which is the cape, which we should talk about because of what it says on it, which is brilliant. Oh, yes. But the, the cape, obviously designed by Ben, but it was sewn by um, somebody called R.M. Hodgson. I don't know their actual first name, but I just want to give credit to that person because it is an incredible piece of work and it's one of the first images i saw from the show before we'd been to see it and i got so excited when i saw hedvig with her arms out oh. i think i was I, I was about to say yeah that's the first thing i saw as well and then i realized why because you shared it <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah well i was very excited <laughs> <laughs> no it's beautiful isn't it because normally if if they change something like the the head the, the words on Hedvig's cape i'm like no no it's wrong no, but this was no. actually a genius uh i don't want to say change because that makes it sound like i want it to permanently be this way it was a genius interpretation yeah yeah 100 percent agree and it's you know, it's the first time england or at least for a very long time have had a head big so to do their own twist i think is is exactly what you'd expect really in, in the best of ways yes so i'd love to see yeah what how would like norway approach this oh that'd be interesting because i've seen how of course like mm. south korea approach it which is quite oh. different yes i i did go on a rabbit hole of korean head bigs a few times because <laughs> they're just they're all so perfect and stunning i love it it, it's almost um, too perfect. I don't, I don't want to insult it. I don't, you know, it's, uh, it's its own thing, but it, it does yeah, lack edge. Yeah. Um, 
I guess it's just a, a different interpretation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, oh, I just um, realised as well, we, there was us going on about the cape. We didn't mention what it actually says. <laughs> go, go on, do tell us what it says, John. No, no, you brought it up. It's yours. Um, so it says gender as a construct. Yes. Mm. And that's um, in a similar style to Yankee, go home with me. Mm-hmm. But um, I just think it's a great way of updating it and also doing something that's nice and different for this hour only uk production since 2006 like it's quite an important moment so Very much. i thought it was great to have a little twist on it but as you say change it up in a way that that you know who could be upset by that it's brilliant and um brilliant. it fits it fits davina so well you know fits davina fits yeah. john now of course and and steven and steven yes yes very good point yeah all the nbs team nb and fits um, I well, Hedvig, I would say, with, with where the trajectory yes. of the story goes by the end. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought that was interesting. I'm, I'm jumping forward in time. Sorry, this isn't going to be linear. No, um, we're going to jump all over the place. Don't well, we? I'm jumping to the end of the show right now because I was just thinking about the particularly genderqueer nature of this version of Hedvig. Mm. And what I really, really loved and I, I'm sure you got a kick out of this too, is when they come out at the end, de-wigged, in the pants. We all know about this. We're expecting, you know, no wig, little pants. But they had like a little top as well because yes. it, it, it needed to be less arguably masculine. You know what I mean? I'm using inverted yeah, yeah. commas. You can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I can but hear them. I just thought, again, that's a really interesting and quality change to it. A small change, but it's just putting a different spin on it, and I yeah. just appreciated that. Well, that's what was good um, about this. It was lots of little changes, not big sweeping ones that destroyed the whole thing. <laughs> no, no, but um, there was one song that had slightly different lyrics as well. Mm. Oh, which one? And I was like, of? my ear was like, what? <laughs> you know, because you're practically trying not to sing along. I, I admit, I was sat there. I was kind of singing under my breath. You know, I'm like, <laughs> if you got some sugar for me. <laughs> yeah, because you don't, you don't really, we don't, we, none of us want to be that girl to no. sing along at the theatre, especially mm. um, when we all know that, you know, we're obsessed, but there's probably a bunch of people in the audience who are there because they like the theatre and or they like Davina and they probably don't know anything about Hedvig. Like, that, oh. that is true because when I went to the, the bathroom, I overheard a conversation between two people about that, basically. I think he, this guy was there with his friend who knew about Hedvig and he didn't. So he was like, oh, this is this has been really, really good. That was great. And he was asking loads of questions like, oh, is the movie like this then? Like, is it different? How is it different? And really going into it, like I think he was really excited to then go and watch the film. Oh, that's that's very cute. I love that. People can find it. You can't stop the signal. So great. Yes. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Mm, so let's just go back to the beginning. So um, obviously we jump. Uh, <laughs> but I skipped to the there. end. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it. Now, let's, let's skip back I, to the beginning. Can't so retain. there was some really good Easter eggs when we first went in. Obviously, there was what ten minutes just to kind of peruse the stage. And uh, I'm actually looking now at a photo I took of all the videos. Uh, oh, so there was, it was kind of like, uh, oh, what do you call it, like sort of travel cases on the, on the left and right. And I think the left ones had little TV screens. And where we was on the right was two, four, six videos mm-hmm. uh, with a pleather. I don't think they could afford the leather. Um, <laughs> just looking at the quality there. No, I'm sure, I'm sure there's reason. Leather. You bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and below that is first one says angry inch they're all, all in caps yeah. second one is freaks slash wicked little town you could fit both of those on an old uh, cassette that's a fun fact <laughs> for you uh next one is a random number generator or generation sorry random number generation i oh. always say generator i think because that's a gaming thing rng I've, yeah, oh. like, it just came out like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, then you got Sugar D with capital uh, with an exclamation mark. Um, on, that's almost and... exactly a wrestler's name. What's he called? I think he's called Sugar D. Sugar D. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my goodness! I've just spotted something. Huh. This is relevant because I'm looking at the same photo now. I've pulled it up, 
And um, Sugar D says Milford Lake on it. I, I was about to get to that, yeah. That is a deep dive. And that's not just a lake joke. Um, do either of you know the reference of Milford Lake? Hmm. It sounds it's, very it's familiar, a, but I can't think. Uh, it's a, it is a deep dive. So um, it's something that turns up again and again in John Cameron Mitchell's work. Um, most notably, they have a song called Milford Lake, co-written with Stephen and performed by both of them <gasps> yes. on that special Wig in a Box charity CD. Which I've got, so I should bloody remember that. <laughs> there you go, Milford Lake. Anyway, carry on, Ginger. I just got excited when I saw that. No, that's Okay. So next one, it says nailed, crossed out. So, uh, yeah, couldn't actually get to the end of that one. And we've got wig in a box. Hey. And then the last one, which is in red, is the origin of love. Hey. I wonder, I wonder why they chose those ones specifically. I'm, I'm not complaining. They're all great. But, you know, the, the, when there's other ones as well. Hmm. Do you think nailed is Ooh. like the, um, the Stephen Truss song? Isn't that the, uh, the nailed to the cross Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I guess that's the link there. Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess whoever um, obviously put those together is just like, what will flow? Obviously, got Angry Inch at the top, Origin Love at the bottom, and then they were just like, eh, this, <laughs> what words will go with what words? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, I'm not complaining about any of your choices. If if you're listening, set designers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, how good how good is the logo? Yes, oh my god. Oof. Oof. I mean not as good as the logo for this show, but you know. <gasps> no, no, no. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well but, speaking um, of I, logos, the I only really thing like I it. the only thing I wasn't keen on. I might as well put in <gasps> one negative. There's always a negative, what? you know. The, I mean, I, I didn't ruin it or anything, because this was still yeah. one of the highlights of my life. So I'm being nitpicky for the pod, you know. Uh, okay. I wasn't too keen on the logo change for Tommy. I actually can't remember what it was. <laughs> well, he doesn't oh, have the cross as his logo, you know, on his head. It's like a, it's like an elaborate. Um, it's like a half moon, half sun kind oh, of motif, okay. which it's almost yeah. a bit too elaborate. Like I couldn't imagine Hedvig drawing that on his head. You know. Yeah, it's come back to me now. Yeah, and it was projected onto the wall, isn't it? Yeah. Fantastic visual, but I just don't know if that should be Tommy's symbol. You know. Yeah, actually, the circle on the moons isn't that the sort of symbols of like the goddess and mm. obviously the god as well. So maybe maybe it's like a loose link to that. I think it's definitely a bit of that. It's definitely sort of tying into origin of love, you know, with the children of the moon, children of the sun. Children of the sun. Yeah. Yeah. But mm. I just think as Tommy's symbol, yeah, it, it just looks weird on his head. It looks weird on his head. But that's being nitpicky. That's like the most mine. I I didn't give a shit after two seconds. <laughs> um, yeah, I wonder if I, we don't know. We can't we can't get inside um, the the team's minds. But I wonder if it's some sort of deliberate choice because you know Christianity probably has enough PR. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it is maybe a it's choice, that. Though, because Tommy being yeah. a, like a hardcore Christian at, at the start of his journey, at least. Is quite important yeah. and they do bring it up it's not like they completely get rid of that. Yeah. that that's actually a really good point yeah it yeah though, though i have obviously opinions on uh on the cross i think at the same time it works perfectly in the context of of him so yeah mm. should have kept it should have kept it but again yeah. who gives a shit when everything else is so good i who think gives I, a shit? tell me if i'm wrong but i i feel like with my vague memories from over a month ago. Um, I feel like the Tommy Christianity thing was quite downplayed compared to normal anyway. It's definitely in terms less of the stage of play. Mm. I think there was less of it. But it, it touched on it enough. Like it mentioned him having the fish on the truck and that he did his guitar mass and all that was in there. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm, I'm, it's really bothering me that I can't remember which song had changed lyrics. I, but I it's know. true. One of them did. It'll come <laughs> back to you. They're, well, speaking of changing yeah. songs, um, yeah, there is one song that was very, uh, dr I want to say dramatically changed, but again, in a mm. positive way, mm -hmm. uh, Sugar Daddy. Yet again, a completely different Sugar Daddy. Mm. 
funk kind of <laughs> sexy number, wasn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. It was very sensual, I thought. It was the, the very bass heavy. Like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and and uh, they they brought onto washing. stage, I'm assuming because they weren't doing the car wash, which I don't know the reason, but I'm assuming it's something to do with COVID protocol still lingering. You know. Um, so the, instead they had no the giant <laughs> they had a giant inflatable gummy bear bouncing around on stage yeah, wearing well bondage gear. <laughs> Gummy version. Yeah, that was brilliant. I'm going to have to find a picture of that to share to uh, the listeners because that was uh, <sighs> unbelievable. I yeah. do remember, though, the, uh, the person who played Yixac, obviously they were in character, but they had the biggest grin when that came out. <laughs> and they were, they were like, <laughs> making it bounce in time to the beat. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, he was smiling was... ear for ear. It was great. He was enjoying himself a lot. Um, that... Dear listeners, that was Elijah Ferreira. Apologies if I've mispronounced his surname. Um, I think that's right, yeah. But yeah, he's um, a trans actor, and I thought he was brilliant. I think we can all agree. Oh, yeah, totally. And, and, really and yet was, again, um, though, a big change. Very different Yitzhak. Very different Yitzhak. And very different singing style. All like a like a real fresh take on it, which I thought was brilliant. Yeah, it's, what a way to put your own stamp on the character. Because, you know, you don't just want to copy what you've seen in other versions or or even in the movie. You know, that's been nailed. Do your own thing. And this was his own thing. And I loved it. How did you, yeah. how did you describe the singing voice? It was kind of... Um... Oof, like, a, like a lovely tenor, like a yeah. tenor. Yeah. So his his vocal was coming in under Hedvig which is like uh, the switcheroo from what we're used to, which yeah. was great because it, it made you listen to everything in a different way. For us that have heard it hundreds and hundreds of times <laughs> in different formats, we're like, oh, that song sounds different, you know, yeah. really um, was such a fresh take on it. I loved it. I really liked it. I could imagine some people complaining, but if they complain, you're mm. an idiot. Yeah. Um, but again, that's clever because Davina's voice, we all know is can go super super high Davina, I, like, yeah. I knew Davina so was why an would you have singer. a Yitzhak who sings above Davina you know doesn't I think make that's sense. the thing isn't it they probably have to figure that out like hang on what's going to work with Davina and they're not singing at their highest for Hedvig by any means no, no. but they have the ability to go all over the place like I mean listeners I'm sure you probably checked out Davina after her episode uh, on the show or you already knew Davina if not, I mean, go and listen to Davina sing, because holy shit. <laughs> Legit one of the greatest voices I've ever heard. Yeah, absolutely love it. And it was perfect for the part. And the fact that she knows how to do the accents and kind of mix that in with their natural singing voice, yeah, I think yeah. is, is perfect. Because that's actually an extra skill, isn't it, if you think about it? You can sing, okay. Can you sing in a foreign accent? That's another challenge. <laughs> and then to be... Obviously, you're not, you're not your natural accent isn't German. So pretending to be German, that is doing an impression of being American yeah. and singing. <laughs> yeah, amazing. <Ooh. laughs> that is difficult, and Davina pulled it off. Yeah, solid seven out of ten. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alan Partridge. Uh, <laughs> now, rating a... breakfasts. <laughs> I just, I just had this feeling that she was. Um, sorry, I'm going to switch between she and they just because drag queens, I always end up saying she. Uh, with drag but, queens, um, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I, I don't think she'd mind. But I just had this feeling. I thought she's perfect casting. I already know from seeing her perform a couple of times and seeing other things that she's done that she can act. And I was just, I thought it was an inspired choice, such a great way to bring the show back to the UK and really like get it going. I like and to I, think that possibly uh, Davina coming on the show uh, inspired her. I don't know. <laughs> oh, let's hope. Let's hope. Maybe, maybe even subconsciously, even if it wasn't like a you know something she thought about. Ah, maybe, maybe yes. she's like, oh, you know, something working away in the background. Yeah. Yeah. True. <gasps> Was it you? You did this. Well I done. I did it. I'm responsible. <laughs> I I deserve a cut of the of the money. No. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she's had sort of restless sleeps for years 
and you tapped into her psyche and in her mind and yeah. worked out what it was. It's the fact that she needed to be head big. That's it. That's it. And I have mm-hmm. given that to her. It's all me. So Davina, yeah. if you're listening, you know who to thank. <laughs> yeah, D- Davina, you can you can send a check in the post. It's fine. You know, uh, um, PayPal's fine. Uh, PayPal. Do you have um, Venmo or anything like that? As as we mentioned, obviously Hipfig and Yuxac, one of the big changes that I really liked was their relationship, because mm. obviously from the uh, from the shows that we've you know accidentally stumbled upon on YouTube, <laughs> and obviously seen the movie many times, and it's Krylon through Blu-ray quality, mm. um, it is obviously very toxic, um, and with this there was a glimmer. Of romance or gr- glimmer of lust at least and yeah. i thought that was really good when they were like running behind the curtain and stuff i just thought oh there is actually some form of relationship rather than it just being just full one-sided yeah no i really like that because in the movie version i'd say there's a it touches on that but you get the impression okay. more like oh that that they used to have that relationship maybe and it's it's long since mm-hmm degenerated it's gone whereas yeah. in this there was it did touch on it a little bit more didn't it like well they they're a bit more conflicted like they do like each other but there's a, there's a lot going on hmm. i just liked yeah. it being a little bit more relaxed is not the right word but i can't think of a better word right now where it was more just depressing but obviously i loved it but more depressing <laughs> in the movie because it just felt whatever there was at the beginning that has far gone and yeah. they're just like burnt out husks <laughs> um, oh, but in the play it, there was still that kind of like slight slight wink yeah there was kind Mind of the that. thought that maybe there's hope for them hmm. yeah i felt a little bit more hopeful that's true and i think that side of it was a good change because it makes Hedvig more likable mm-hmm. and we do really kind of need to like her <laughs> <laughs> don't we well, she's such a fascinating character as as we've all yeah. talked about before you know um well she's got a lot of problems don't we all yes but in any other movie or play that would be a villain <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah good point a bit of a mean girl <laughs> yeah but but you know she's had a tough life can you yeah. excuse the uh harsh treatment of others because of that no you can't excuse it but it explains it Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you've hit that right, right in the balls out there. Well, you know, I've talked about this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've mentioned it in the pub once or twice. Uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, the occasional chat about <laughs> about the character. Yeah, it's, it's not like we we sat up till all hours talking about it as soon as we got got out of the show. Uh, oh well, the after party is important. That's yeah. the most. Im- in some ways, I do find that the most important of any play, any show, any film is the bit afterwards where you, you go and digest it. I don't like just seeing something and then going home. Uh, you know, well, maybe if, mm. if if you're seeing the thing with the person you live with, that's fine. Okay, you're going to talk about it at home. But, you know, if you go with other people, I don't like them going our separate ways. It's like, no, 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 hang on. Let's go to a pub or something and let's sit down and yeah. let's, let's talk about what we've just witnessed. Yeah, I yeah, mean, was... we definitely talked longer than the show actually ran. So that, <laughs> that's a good sign. <laughs> That's my speciality. That's what <laughs> and um, and what about the band? What did everyone think of the actual band? <gasps> I thought they were amazing. I really, really loved them. Um, there were some sick guitar solos going on. <laughs> Is that what the yeah, kids say? Good. Yeah, well, the kids of 1992. <laughs> <laughs> rad. Rad. It was rad. Rad guitar solos. I, I, we were all kids of that era. We say rad. <laughs> Mm-hmm. No, I, honestly, I thought the um, the bass player was totally bodacious. Um, <laughs> they, cool. they were strutting us up the hills. They sounded amazing. Yeah. They had a full kind of sort of I don't one piece is definitely not the word, but like that kind of lace um, piece. <laughs> yeah, I definitely wanted that for myself. I wanted the boots. Yeah, they were. Those boots were something special. And there the were some sexy people in the show, wasn't there? That's not fair. Like, we need to just address this. There, everyone was very attractive, and yeah. How that, dare the they be? The face person was extremely hot, 
<laughs> I have to say it that way. And um, yeah, so is Yitzhak. Very hot. Yeah. I actually have just looked it up. Um, I do know the names of the band. Oh. So there is, the band is led by the music supervisor and musical director, Alex Beechen. Mm-hmm. Forgive me, Alex, if I have said your name wrong. And they are also playing keys. Um, Francis Bolly on guitar. Isis Dunthorne on drums. Brilliant. I think Isis drew the logo on the drums as well, if I remember rightly. Yeah. And then Jess Williams on bass. So it was Jess that we were thirsting after. Uh, well, actually, sorry, I got that slightly wrong. But we were first in either both. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, they <laughs> had the super straight long hair. And it looked amazing. Ah, Proper rock yeah. vibes. And then it's the guitarist that we loved um, with that oh, kind of lace yeah. number. Just uh-huh. had some shredding and they had like lovely okay. natural curly hair. They looked great. Everyone Oof. looked great. Everyone. People. Very interesting costumes on everyone. Hedvig yeah. had some very different costumes, actually. There's one mm-hmm. where she was, if anything, you could say it was very understated. It was kind of just like a black dress. But there was something so stylish about it. I thought it was a very interesting choice to go with a very plain dress, but I don't know what if it was the cut. There was something I was obsessed with with that thing. Yeah, I think I, wasn't it sort of pleated or something? Yeah, yeah. there was a bit an A-line interesting, at the base. Interesting yeah, cut to it. Like, I don't want to say Vivian Westwood because she has extreme kind of uh, lines, you mm. know, but still <laughs> inspired maybe. I think something we haven't touched on is very important, especially for our generation, is the projector, the school mm. projector, yes. to explain oh, the beginning yes. of it on the first song. Oh, yeah. Do you think there were people there who were so young, they were like, what is that? Oh, no. Oh, no, I hope not. I bet there was. <laughs> I bet there was. They would have never seen an OHP, would they? That's listeners, in a museum, please, that. Please tell me, listeners, you know what an overhead projector is. If you don't, I'm, gonna just, <laughs> I'm just going to top myself right now. Yeah, I think, um, do they all need to unfollow if they don't know what an overhead projector is? If, if, yeah, yeah. <laughs> unfollow me. No, please don't unfollow. And, <laughs> and of course, Yitzhak, you know, puts one upside down by accident and all As that. As we've all done. Cheeky smile. Yeah. <laughs> We're only, only best friends of the teacher who actually got to touch the projector. So I sadly did not. I don't think I've even ever used one. Oh, I did, but I wasn't ever friends with teachers. I think I just used to screw around with it when they weren't looking. <gasps> I was a well, bad student. I'm going to speak good. to Mr. Meldrew, your science teacher now. <laughs> he may be in a retirement home, but I'm going to find him. <laughs> yeah. Give him the info. <laughs> I'd, I'd prefer you spoke to Miss Hedvig, <laughs> my favourite teacher. Oh, I have um, I have a tiny thing to add. So, um, back to the drummer, because everyone was great. But Isis Dunthorne, on the drummer. Uh, apologies, they did not paint the Epic logo on the drums. That was oh. painted by an artist called Yellow Ginny. Well done, Yellow Ginny. Oh, just that sounds like a everyone. Pseud- that sounds like a pseudonym <laughs> for Ginny Lemon. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my goodness, is that their side hustle? Oh my god. They paint drum logos as well. They can do anything. <laughs> I mean, it could be, couldn't it? Who knows? It could. Be. But now yeah. I want to see Ginny Lemon play Hedvig just for a laugh. I just love checking out all these names because it's just it's such an incredible group of creative people that have brought all this magic together for our eyeballs. Yeah, I, I just couldn't believe the the effort oh. they went into to create. Because I thought, yeah. well, Hedvig, you know, you can mm. do it with no set. You don't yeah. need a backdrop. Like it could just be, oh, it's in the club. That's the saying, you know. But they went above and beyond the lighting. It was kind of like the whole thing was sort of halfway between. The, the off-Broadway show and the Broadway show. It's like, let's mix the two. Mm. Like, I had the Broadway lighting, all that pink and sort of purpley sort of colour. But yeah. the, it still felt rough. Well, this is this is where it comes to my only minor complaint of the <gasps> show. Not complaints again. The set design, uh, which I actually love. What? Um, <laughs> so all of the amps looked brand spanking new. Ah. Uh, I don't know, obviously, in, in real life, they may have got sponsorship or something, but behind the drummer is four massive Marshall amps, like um, the ones that have four 10-inch speakers in each of them. Yeah. Uh, and then behind the keyboard is etc. is loads of Black Star 
um, amps. So there's like two or three black star amps. They look straight out of the box. Um, <laughs> so they should have, uh, well, to be fair, actually, it, actual realism, they're probably renting them out, but they should have put some grub on it, you know, some peanut butter or something <laughs> just to make it a little bit more, bit, bit more grotty. Take some chips out of it. Just start hacking bits <laughs> off like Sex Pistols <laughs> stuff. You won't get your deposit back, but it'll be <laughs> more realistic. Stand a couple of pints on it or something. Like sell it to you. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I agree with that, that little I nitpick. Did not notice that. Um, yeah, well done for spotting the Black Star. That's always important. <laughs> well, I, I remember thinking, like, even though I know Black Star's a, you know, a, a company, I did think, um, like, hang on, have they chose these because of the Bowie connection? Oh, do you I reckon? Hope so. Maybe, yeah, because there's a lot of amps you could pick. Yeah, um, the thing, yeah, with the Marshall bit, I, again, I'm sure this isn't a real thing, but it is uk based it's from milton Keynes. Mm. uh black star i don't know i think that may be american i'm gonna keep waffling mm. on donkeys are aliens donkey are aliens while i look uh oh. they're the british as well there we oh. go my mistake so maybe that's yeah. the link maybe they've gone uk brands who knows maybe hey, keeping it keeping it british british mate uh, yeah. the- none of that foreign muck <laughs> Um, as a as a bonus, there is actually a Black Star Misfit um, amp. Really? Oh, like a yeah. signature amp. That's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, that's nothing like to do that. with what we're talking about, but a nice nugget. For hey, you. I don't care. It's music related. Music, <laughs> it's all connected to this stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, there's there's actual reasons. It'd be rented, but yeah, that, that was my only thing. I think everything mm. else, set design-wise, because I know you had some niggity bits, um, I think mm. the rest of it was perfect. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I felt exactly the same. Um, actually, I remember, Carla, you mentioned one thing you loved. You might have even forgotten this yourself. Was Probably. towards the end, <laughs> towards the end, <laughs> um, you especially loved what I can only describe as Hedvig was like in half drag at one point. Ooh. They were de-dragging. Yes. Yeah, that was really powerful. So I, I was actually going to... I wanted to talk about this anyway, about the, the side piece of the set that was covered up mm. with a curtain and then they reveal it to be like basically a version of her trailer. Yes. So that she has a, a separate area to be in. And then Yidsuk used it at one point as well. I thought that was really clever. I, I really like that because it's kind of... Um... You know, showing that that a their connection, but also the way they're kind of mirrors of each other. Like they both want very mm. similar things, really. Like Yitzhak basically mm. wants to wants to be like Hedvig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, secretly putting the wigs on. Yeah, but yeah, back to, back to what you're saying um, with the half track. I thought it was a really lovely sort of um, moment of vulnerability. It was and very something... different, wasn't it? Seeing like. Yeah wigless yeah. Hedvig not not Hansel yeah. or any other version but Hedvig no no mid transformation yes in in like the silk kimono and the ginger nose I love the silk kimono we all do <laughs> but um yeah I, I thought that was a really again a really inspired change to it because as you say midway somewhere between the off Broadway and the Broadway adding an extra bit of set like that just has a totally different dimension that just can't be there if you're on a plain stage with the band. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool. I wasn't expecting that weird little corner bit. I, I've seen stage no. shows where they've got the you know the door so Hedvig can lean out the door and shout at Tom <sighs> and things. Yeah. But I've not seen them do, maybe it has been done before, but sort of like a mini version of the trailer in the corner. Yeah, and I didn't see it coming either. They had me there because... Mm. you know it, it's covered up and then i think um they project using the overhead projector kid <laughs> and they project onto that that piece of fabric and then it's behind the fabric <gasps> did not did we first see behind coming. it was it during wig in a box because <sighs> hmm. it's when they do the you know okay everybody you know and get everybody to sing along because wasn't wasn't yitzhak behind that <laughs> Oh, yeah, good mm. question. I think it was most of the time it was covered. Mm. I think, yeah. yeah, I mean, even when they ran behind the curtain, it's not like they whipped it open and kept it open. I think they they kind of hid it for 
most of it because I, I think by doing that it suddenly makes it feel more expansive doesn't it mm. towards the end it's like oh so many layers and of course as uh, Carl has mentioned already then you've got the the layers above whether like walking above the actual stage so yeah I think it was just well put mm. together to make it feel it's constantly growing really as I did walking. love that bit above the stage because they went there oh, for yes. the uh for Wicked Little Town at the end. And it took a second to notice there was someone there. It was like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the huge projections of their face just looking absolutely gorgeous. <gasps> the oh. bitch. <laughs> oh. What yeah, a bitch. Those, those giant projections, stunning. Like, yeah, can I have a copy of that to cut, to put across my entire lounge wall, please? <laughs> yes. Davina, if you're listening, we, I'm sure you're probably yeah. not. But can you yeah, please upload that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put it on your Instagram even. Anything, anything. We need to see that on loop. Please. Yeah, I actually yeah, would. Yes. Remember, Davina, it's command shift and four, and then you can take a screenshot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If go. she's got a Mac. Yeah. That's um, true. Actually, while we're, while we're on staging, I just was looking at a little picture of the setup, and I remembered something, oh. which, again, is a small addition, but... I really love the tiny little bar tables that were nearest uh, the right-hand side of the stage, which is where we were sat. So we were right near those. Mm. I think it helps sort of blend everything together. And it's a nice little nod back to it being performed in tiny little bars and things, isn't it? Like, it is also a little bit of a bar Yeah, yeah. in the corner. I thought that was really cool. I loved that. Yeah, so good. So, I guess a question for both of you: Have you chatted to anyone online that has seen the show more than once? That like, you know kept going back to that same Davina show. Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I think I think someone I know has gone to two of them. Okay, uh, but they didn't kind of get back to me with any like, oh well, it was different on the second. You know, they were just like, oh, it was great. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we need some intel, don't we? Yeah, yeah I was speaking to um, a UK head head who also, I think that, yeah, I think they went to Leeds actually, not the. Yeah, this person Manchester did Leeds, one. yeah. Yeah. Um, but they, I think they still only went once. I think a lot of people were awful Southerners like us, I'm afraid. <laughs> Sorry. And um, so chances are it would be a huge journey for us and we'd probably only be able to do it once, which is a shame. So, But yeah. you're, you're hardcore, you're proper. The rest of them are southern wimps. All right. Yeah, we're hardcore. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you're honorary. honorary scousers now. Thank or Manx, you. you can be both. <gasps> I feel blessed either way. <laughs> but, um, yeah, not just on a selfish level for travel, but I think in general... Don't we think it needs a West End transfer? Yeah. I Again, right, I, I've said... Actually, I haven't said this on mic. I've said it off mic. But this is pure speculation, listeners. I haven't heard anything. John didn't say. Davina didn't say. So let me put that out there first. But I, I think maybe this was a test run for that. I think it's like, let's see if people want to see it. Because mm. I know John did bring up on the show, and I think Mike Potter did, like they were looking at doing a London show before uh, COVID. Yeah. Yeah, I know. They sort of had plans in the works for a good couple of years, didn't they? Mm -hmm. but that was before the thing. So maybe this yeah. was like an experiment. Like, are, are people yeah. going out yet? Can we do this? Yeah. Again, speculation. Don't quote me. <laughs> no, but if it's an experiment, it certainly succeeded because I think it was pretty much was it sold out every night yeah 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 and every review venues. i saw was positive i don't think i saw anything under like a four star review mm. no i literally only saw people rave about it but then i'm in my echo chamber of hedwig people <laughs> well that's true but I, I mean these reviews i'm thinking you know like the guardian yeah. the independent yeah. things like that really wow. it, and they okay. loved it, yeah. so. i haven't read those oh that's so good yeah i was li literally just looking more at like band reaction hmm on, on social media and people are freaking out and rightly so <laughs> i wish the uh the reddit uh thing for hedvig was more popular because that would have been a great place to get fan reactions but nobody uses the reddit really mm. no they're not hedvig nancy drews that's a shame 
<laughs> we need those, don't we? We need them. I think John knows more than it than they're saying. I think John has spoken to other John, and <gasps> other John has said, "Actually, yeah, make just, just the 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 <laughs> podcast have been officially um, employed." Yeah. Yeah. I forgot what to tell you, you all. This, know? this is now the official <laughs> Hedvig podcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. Again, John didn't say anything. I, I promise yeah. you, it's not a deception. Yeah. It is just me speculating. For but, all but, I know, John is planning it right now. <laughs> you know what? I'd settle for just just bring us the Origin of Love tour. Come on, it's been actual years. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Yeah. I, I would love that. I think it'd be great because now we've seen Hedvig live. Not that I don't want to see it again, but now I just want to see John. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. Maybe oh. um, maybe Michael Pitt will tour it instead. Oh, my God. Um, that would be amazing. Maybe Please. He's got the right Your dream. And he's, uh, he's going to just suddenly be the origin of the love tour with Michael Pitt. <laughs> I would pay weird. anything for that. Anything. I think people would like, lose their shit. <laughs> and, and I love Michael Pitt. There was one line in the show that got kind of, I don't want to say ruined, but the fans laughed yeah. in advance of the punchline. And I can't, what was it? I can't remember. Oh, I don't do, that, yeah, it was. They were, it, it was only like half said. And I heard people yeah. like, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, so you couldn't hear what the actual punchline was. We know what the punchline is, but still, you know. <laughs> mm, yes, but we still need to hear it, don't we? Because we're trying to take it all in. Oh, so I the, can't remember who that was, but I, I think it was, you know, I was talking about the the corner that looks like a bar and her big mm-hmm. sits on the stool and like picks up a beer yes i think it was during that bit i can't remember what the line was maybe it was the yeah. jobs we uh, we call blow it was, maybe it was one of those no. kind of lines i don't know no. but you know this is a message to theater goers we all like a little bit of raucousness but if you know the gag's coming <laughs> you know, hold off on the laugh for the people who don't know yeah there's always going to be a percentage of people who don't and you yeah. just let them enjoy it let them enjoy it. Like, that's the thing. You know something funny is happening. Let them experience the funny. You can be raucous <laughs> as soon as the gag lands. That's fine. And really, the the show is also, it's, stand, it's scripted stand-up comedy. Mm. So to people who don't know it at all, which there would have been and still would be if it got its West End transfer that it deserves. Mm-hmm. You know, for those fresh audiences, that's just off-the-cuff jokes you yeah. know yeah yeah it should feel that way it should feel improvised all right well that was something i really liked about this right even though i've seen the movie eight billion times i've talked about it for five <laughs> billion hours yeah. um it all still felt fresh i i wasn't bored yeah. i wasn't like oh, i've heard this no, did I'm, your yeah, hands slowly lift up to the to the last song <laughs> uh Aww. not so slowly they shot off <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> You didn't yeah. feel like one hand shaking and you grabbed it like, no, I'm British. I must keep it down. And then well, the other one shaking well, it like, no. <laughs> normally I mean, I'm it is super, in the song. <laughs> yeah, but normally I'm super British. And if, if a band is like, you know, lift up your hands, I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. That's <laughs> awkward. Fuck off. Yeah. Uh, but in this, I didn't feel awkward. I did it. Actually, that re- actually reminded me. Do you feel, obviously, by watching so much Hedvig in every form, that there's a little bit of Hedvig in you <gasps> as you perform? Uh, absolutely. 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 A thousand percent. I, I try and take things from all performers I uh, I like when I'm on stage with the band. Um, I Not just music-related things, either. I, I have a little move I do on one of our songs that I stole from the wrestler Maki Ito. Okay. Because she dances oh, to the ring. Yeah. She's in a company called Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. And in, in TJPW, they're, they're all um, idols, which, you know, in Japan, that means like a pop singer. Right, okay. yeah. Uh, so they're all idols and pro wrestlers. And Maki Ito <laughs> used to be like a proper idol, and she got fired um, because, her, because her head was too big. <laughs> well, you know what Japan's like. It's all about image. It's like oh, you're not attractive enough. Basically, you've got a big head. You look weird. Um, so she comes out, she sings, and she does a dance. And I've stolen one of her moves. Uh, but I, I do try and steal a bit of a bit of head vig. I put a, you know, I put a couple of moves in there, a couple of facial expressions and things like this. I, I try and take oh, from all brilliant. different. Brilliant. I think that's good. Be inspired by your faith. Yeah. Well, I'm going to throw that back at you then, Ginger. Do you channel any of Miss Hedvig 
when no, you're on stage? No, just me. <laughs> None. All me. None. There's nothing. You never think of her. Not one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying that I'm not inspired by anyone but myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Be your own inspiration, like Violet Chachki. Exactly. It's also no. very uh, very Johnny no. Rotten. That's, that's what Johnny <laughs> Rotten always used to say in the 70s. You know, They'd be like, oh, he got interviewed by, I think, Janet Street Porter. She's like, oh, you know, who are your musical heroes? And he's like, I haven't got any heroes. None. They're all useless. <laughs> yeah, um, on, on a slight tangent related to that, I saw an interview probably only from 10 years ago, and it was Henry Rollins and Mr. Rotten. Yeah. And Henry never met Johnny, and he, because he's so humble, mm. he just sort of went off in a sort of verbal diarrhea of just like, I love, I love you, you know, big inspiration. And Johnny just sort of stared at him. <laughs> and then when the next question came about punks, he basically just said, all punk was shit, <laughs> including <laughs> um, bloody uh, Black Flag. <laughs> and then we was just like, oh. okay. I, I get it, right? I I love punk and I hate it at the same time. It's got the best music and it's got the worst music. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's interesting about Hedvig. Hedvig takes a punk attitude, but it's not... It's not punk that you think of in the you know the eighties like bah, 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 big bowhawks. It's it's punk in its truest sense, inspired by Bowie. I mean, the Pistols started because they stole Bowie's amps. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, at the, <laughs> is it like the Apollo sign kit is one way of his multiple yeah. lines. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. They took mics, yeah. they took amps, they, they they robbed loads of stuff off Bowie. They, they were all fans of, of <laughs> David and stuff. Um, so punk, punk comes from all kinds of different different areas. And Hedwig combines that. I mean, you've got punky songs, Angry Inch is punk as fuck. Yeah. yeah. And actually, uh, obviously there is references to Bowie in, in the movie particularly. But I think Hedvig does have a lot of Bowie in them because Bowie was a music magpie. Mm -hmm. He took from the best and morphed it into his own. And that's what Hedvig did. Yeah, exactly. And Davina did it for the show. Oh, my God. Davina did it, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Everything is connected. Ooh. Fingers crossed it does come back. That would be amazing. And we will be there (gasps) again. I do need to see it more. I will a definitely go anytime it comes here. So again, if you're listening to Vina or anyone putting a show on, come to Manchester, come to Liverpool, I'm going. If you want to do a warm up, you can come to our local theatre. Yes, there uh, you go. the local theatre. Yeah. Except you can do it in our living room. It's okay, Davina. Sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, you can you can serenade me while I'm showering in the morning. That's okay as well. That's fine. Uh, no, yeah, that's yeah. not. <laughs> Direct, Director Jamie Fletcher, DM us because uh, we need to know when is it. Coming to a town near us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, oh, oh, are we pretty much? Is that everything? I'm trying to think. I think so. Yeah, uh, I think everyone felt the same. Everyone left with giant grins. Um, yeah. And it, you know, it's a good night when complete strangers are kind of looking at each other to to start a conversation. Yeah. You know, everyone, yeah. Because they're buzzing. And I think most people weren't in groups. They were just a night, maybe a pair. Um, or on their own, so everyone was kind of just eyeballing everyone in the right way, just like need to talk about it. So we got yeah. stopped, really, especially because your t-shirts, um, those bloody t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have had no. one as well. <laughs> no, 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 they're, they're, they're awesome, and yeah, it attracted all sorts, and yeah, got some good conversations. Absolutely, and you know what? During the show, I'm not afraid to admit this. I cried. Yeah. I didn't cry once. Yeah. I didn't cry twice. I probably cried about five times. <laughs> Only the five. Only. I was crying almost yeah. every song. And and some songs yeah. spoke to me even more than they ever have before. I think because a lot of stuff going on in my personal life and things like this, mm. it really like extra spoke to me. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, Jesus, <laughs> that's breaking down in, in a positive way. Well, I mean, oh, well, in- that, that means the show's doing its job, right? It's meant mm-hmm. to take you on this emotional journey. Exactly. Through like. I mean- high energy rock and then laughs and then tragedy and sadness and it's got everything hasn't it so sounds like it was working it was it was it was perfection Uh, in all seriousness though when you two were talking about um some of the songs a minute ago i did get choked up and you probably noticed that i muted the mic 
And it's actually because I, I was choking on my squash. But, um, you know, I <laughs> no, did you were weeping. But I was weeping. <laughs> I was also doing this noise. <gasps> <laughs> you're busy choking to death but that's okay, okay. That's fine. <laughs> no i did um i did get a little um moist around the eyes watching oh. it but i didn't cry because i am made of stone and i pretty much will only cry if it's you know probably something to do with star wars or doctor who that's my thing right i don't mm. weirdly i don't cry in like real life so to speak if something bad happens i just sort of get annoyed but I cry at movies at the drop of a hat. I cry at, I cry at Revenge of the Sith, and I'm not even a fan of the prequel Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, but smart, Star Wars is very emotional. It's very you know. emotional. Very when I first saw Force Awakens, I saw those x queens. I saw them unfold, and I, I cried. Oh. And then I saw the Millennium Falcon, and I cried again. No. So I, I didn't cry at those, but I cried as soon as the word Star Wars came up on the big screen. Just, oh, bah! I was like, oh, that's it. oh. oh. <laughs> Uh, did, did you sob when the young Lins died? I do, even though young they're irritating. Because <laughs> that that I don't want to be too mean to a child actor, but that kid has the he's the worst actor I've ever seen in my life. Because <laughs> no, he, he Martha Skywalker, there are too many of them. What are we going to do? <laughs> Die. That's what you're gonna do. <laughs> this is when you find out that's a Gosh. young Davina to Campo. Oh. <laughs> Oh no. Davina, confirm, deny, let us know. <laughs> we need to hear it. But yeah, um I am usually I am usually made of stone in most things. So the <laughs> fact that I got emotional at all is a testament to their abilities. That is how good the show was, how good Davina yeah. was, how good everybody was. So I would yeah. say I recommend you go and see it, but the run is finished, of course. But if it ever comes <laughs> oh, no. back, go and see it again. And why not just go and follow Davina in general because they're an amazing Hedvig, they're an amazing queen. You know what, as well, there's everything on YouTube, and yet I have not been able to find some dodgy mobile phone footage of it. <laughs> I am surprised, maybe because the venue was sort of, um, I don't want to say small, because that sounds mm. insulting, but it was intimate, mm, yeah. intimate, intimate. So intimate. you don't want to be yeah. spotted filming it. Yeah, yeah, I'm just surprised. I feel like. Um, you know, it's a good and a bad thing that pretty much anything you go to now, somebody immediately will have uploaded like their 4K yeah. <laughs> bootleg, <laughs> won't they? Which is great. And I watch all those things. But um, yeah, nothing, nothing. No, it's all, sadly. It's all in our, only in our memories now. Oh. Well, it might emerge one day, but uh, in the meantime, you can you can just listen to us to chat about it and imagine. You <laughs> imagine. imagine. I think we've painted a pretty enough picture. I think so. I think so. So, th so thank you to everybody who put it on. It was a wonderful experience. It made my goddamn life. It's something I've been waiting for forever, and I'm sure you both felt very similar. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you personally. The person who's listening right now connected. Thank you. Yes. Oh, well, do yeah. Thank you, the listener, for uh, not only listening to the show in general, but for for coming back for this bonus episode. I promised bonus episodes. Here's one. I was planning to get you some well before now, but there's been a lot of a lot of problems with uh, timing and thing and things going on, shall we say? But they are going to come. There are going to be bonus episodes, uh, more of these. And you know hey. what? I don't know if I've mentioned this on this show. But eventually, I'm going to put all the episodes we're doing on the Patreon, the rent ones, they are going to come to this feed. Oh, uh, I don't care if that stops you subscribing. I don't care. Um, I, when it's done, and I'm recording another one next week, so it's you know, it's back, it's, it's in action at the minute. Uh, they are going to go for free on this feed as like a little treat, shall we say. So in oh, a weird my. way, there's going to be more Rent episodes than Hedvig because that's song by song. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever, whatever, I don't care. I make my own rules. That's punk. That's Hedvig. Hedvig makes her own rules. And uh, is there anything you two would like to plug coming up? I don't know. I mean, you, you, you've just put on a big show, so we've missed the opportunity to plug that. Yeah. Yeah, we won't mention that because that's done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Gin Ginger's got a few things coming up, haven't you? Yeah, I don't think there's anything of, like, too much I can say. Uh, oh. It's all exciting, though. 
Yeah, lots of music. You're uh, playing Hedvig on the West End, yes. West End, yeah. <gasps> oh, no, the secret's out. <laughs> movie come out with me in it. It's all good stuff. But yeah, for now, I mean, just just tack on another thing in about two weeks' time and I'll, I'll give you more details. Oh, okay. We, we could do another bonus episode if you like. Yeah, just like make that. sure it's like when I'm like, I don't know, in the bathroom brushing my teeth and I was like... <laughs> 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 hey, people will never forgive... On Star Wars Minute, they had the podcaster Paul Shear on, who's like the most famous podcaster there is, except for Joe Rogan, who's a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> they had Paul Shear on, and they never forgive him because he was on Star Wars Minute eating a sandwich. <laughs> oh, no. Well, in terms of things that I have to plug, um, a couple of things to talk about. One, please, anybody that hasn't yet, follow my Instagram, Hedvig's Love, because it's literally only Hedvig. That's all I put there. So if you like any and all head figs of any description, head there. Head um, there. Head, head, yeah. get, get, get heads and head to head figures. Well. <laughs> if you're How a head is your head? head? I've hadn't had any complaints. Oh. Uh... Yeah. Um, correct answer. <laughs> and then the other thing to note is it's a long way off, but it's always good to plan and you never know when people are going to be listening to this episode. Mm-hmm. So... Ginger and I do shows in our town in Bedford. Uh, we do cabaret shows. As you mentioned, we've just done a big show. And the next one is going to be on 15th of October. So it might be a little bit ooky spooky. Oh. But to be honest, all of our shows are a little bit ooky spooky. That kind of is the brand. But this will be doubling down on the ooky spooky. So, yeah, it'll be uh, an all car cast, as always, with a live band at the end. So that'll be really fun. And then we're trying to get some slightly more, well, punk queer punk free cabaret shows going in another venue in the town as well so look out for that and all the details for that stuff is on extravaganza bedford hey yeah check that out everybody and as usual you know this show is still everywhere you uh, could find it before facebook hedvig's wicked little town twitter at hedvig pod instagram that's the same hedvig pod and why don't you, hmm, let me think, head on over to the Patreon that I mentioned, Sleepy Charlie Media's Patreon. You can listen to the Rent episodes that have released so far. And you can listen to the bonus stuff from my other show, Bat Minute, that I've brought up because there's lots of Bat Minute content. Um, we've done a couple of commentary tracks. We've done a commentary track about Beetlejuice. Hey. Um, which oh, brilliant. Rumor has it they are going to film the Beetlejuice musical soon. Proper oh, legit. really? Oh, excellent. That's the um, rumour. I've heard from reliable Broadway sources. Oh. So you're going to get a properly filmed, well, a bit like you got, like, there's a great version of Kinky Boots you can get, filmed legit, proper, like Hamilton style, you know. Oh, is there a legit Kinky Boots? There is. I, I have it. I'll, pa- I'll pass it on to you. <laughs> yeah. Send it my way because I have, I've, well, I've obviously seen the movie, but I've never... Oh, seen the oh. stage play which i would love to it's it's wonderful i didn't think it would translate uh i was like how can you do a stage play out of this movie the music's by cindy lauper that's stupid it's really english what? but it's fucking brilliant yeah cindy lauper did the music wow wow that makes it even cooler it is cool. how exciting well uh you know go and watch kinky boots but go and watch hedvig again that's the most important thing and uh, yeah. you know keep an eye on the feed because more stuff will come down the line and thank you for returning once again listeners we're going to head off down the road to the next gig mm-hmm.